uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ebi, Ebi uh, uh, for uh, introducing us today. And we're excited to join uh, the CBE, CBER conference uh, to share with you the work we're doing in the area of financial literacy. Um, we've been in this business for some time, and uh, for about 21 years, uh, to enhance the financial literacy of, of Americans with, with a specific emphasis on the financial literacy of people of color, you know, and so we spend a lot of time with HBCUs. Oh, by the way, I'm a graduate of Fort Valley State University rather than Mega Everest, but I've been working with Mega Everest for some time in uh, yeah. addressing financial literacy. But uh, if you bring up the slide here, I can share with you uh, or give me the opportunity to bring up my slides. Uh, we can walk through this and, but you can as bring I'm up doing- the slide. You can share your screen. Okay. And as I, um, but as I um, um, uh, get prepared uh, to walk through the slides, I would like to introduce uh, again my uh, my panel members. Uh, we have Miss um, Mrs. Uh, Riley Urban from the KIA Family Foundation, who is a supporter of uh, our work uh, there at Mega Efforts, and we're excited about that uh, and our financial literacy training of the students there uh, at uh, at Mega Efforts, as well as our student ambassadors program there. And uh, she have opportunity to share with uh, the work that they are doing too in this particular space. I uh, also have Laura Dolman uh, from the Carver Community Development Corporation uh, with the financial literacy work they're doing in the community, particularly in the area of Brooklyn and Harlem and all around uh, Manhattan, New York, they will share as well. Then we have um, Professor Raquel Bennett who uh, is a professor there at, at Mega Everest. And she's also served as the oversight professor for our organization, the Society for Financial Education and Professional Development uh, of our Student Ambassadors Program, where we teach we teach, our, teach students our curriculum and they in turn teach their peers. And also they go into the community, they help the community uh, make better decisions associated with the management of their financial resources. We also have one of our Student Ambassadors with, with us today who has shared the experience she's had in gaining a financial literacy certificate that gives us new credentials in terms of knowledge in the area of financial literacy. And uh, that, that is Miss um, Miss um, Ro Ro uh, Roseanne Hicks. She'll, she'll join us too uh, today. So we're excited about the panel we have uh, uh, with us today. Now, when we, uh, when we look at our organization, we can move the slides here, just to give you the background here as we get started. Uh, we started back in 1998 uh, in terms of uh, providing financial literacy, and we spent a lot of time uh, with uh, HBCUs because we knew there was a, a particular board in the community in terms of having the knowledge needed to make sound financial decisions, and that's what we wanted to do so we can maximize the resources generated even from uh, wages, uh, salaries, as well as from the operation of a business. How do you make good decisions so you get the most out of uh, what you have uh, available to you? We received a lot of awards for the program over the years. Uh, we reached a lot of students and, uh, and we've seen changes made in, uh, in terms of how they go about uh, maximizing the resources. So the next slide. Now, uh, we're a nonprofit organization. So we have, uh, we, uh, we have we received grants to support the, the programs we have at HBCUs, including the program that we, we have at, at, at uh, Meg Everett's. And uh, we, as I said, we put a lot of emphasis on helping individuals uh, improve their financial well-being and long-term economic stability. Because we know we have a lot of economic cycles that occur in this country, uh, but we got to be, be have people in, you know, have the knowledge needed to prepare for those economic cycles, the downward cycles, and upward cycles, so they can get the most out of it. And the pandemic was a good disclosure of what was happening in our community. We need more information in terms of making good decisions because we got flat-footed because we got dislocated in terms of employment and not only the health situation that occurred, but we prepare people to do that. Okay, the next slide. Now we have different uh, 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 seminars and workshops. We have credit management and student loan management uh, seminars for the students, how to manage credit when they're in school. So they're not rejected from a job opportunity, from a business opportunity later on so they know how to manage credit. So when they decide to move into entrepreneurship or, or acquire a job, they have the knowledge. In student loan management, of course, that is a big issue. So we want to make sure they understand how to manage student loans. Then we also have a credit personal money management seminar, excuse me, that covers all the key components of personal finance, budgeting, you know, risk management, the insurance side, you know, investing, you know, how to plan for retirement, home ownership, all those things that are needed so we want, we want all the students to be successful when they finish school 
to have that knowledge so they can be successful. Now we know that was a low level invest education investments among uh, people of color. So we created a workshop or seminar and teaching students how to make investments uh, in, the, in stocks and bonds and mutual funds on down the line, EFTs, and also particip participate in the Compass 401k because the, relate, the, the rate of participation is very low. And we want to find ways to close the wealth gap by making more investments. So we teach them how that, how that process works. Home ownership is another issue for us. So we address home ownership. Uh, we know only 44% of African-Americans own a home, people of color own a home. So we want to raise that. And we raise that by showing that how that process works, even the closing process, how you go about closing a loan uh, and you know, saving for uh, your down payment, your closing costs. So they have a good understanding because we find out when people don't know, they don't do, you know, or they're fearful. So we want to take the fear out of that at all, uh, from that, these processes, okay, and programs. Next. Now, we, uh, in 2017, uh, we always, our financial educators and myself would go on campus and do uh, sessions uh, for students, but we wanted to have an impact throughout the year uh, and have, have students on campus teaching their peers. So we came up with a student, uh, student ambassadors program where we teach our, the students, like at Mega Evers, like Miss Hicks, Miss like Miss um, Miss Hicks uh, there at at um, at Mega Evers. So she's able to teach her peers some of the same things we taught, and also she has a has uh, she's taking a course. Uh, on key, dealing with the key financial man, key, key personal money management subject. So she understands, you know, how this whole process works. So it's a peer-to-peer -peer program. So we have financial literacy training all year long, all year long on campus. We're there and they're there as well. And we also bring in experts as well to support them or to make sure we have impact and people make good sound decisions. Uh, we, right now we target targeting HBCUs because a lot of students are first generation students. And they come out of public schools and public schools don't teach personal finance. Only about 23 in the whole country uh, require a personal finance course to, to graduate. So we got a lot of people out there who just don't know how to manage financial resources. They go through life, you know, manage the resources based on luck or chance, you know. And sometimes it's like and that, that's not it's that good. You want to be able to make good decisions. Okay, the next. Now here you, you see here, we got the ambassadors there. I'm with some of them there and that's down in Jackson, Mississippi. So we go all over the place. We got them in, throughout the country and it's working, out, it's working out quite well. They also develop leadership skills. And all I can say one thing, all those who have graduated from college now, they all get jobs so they go to graduate school, you know? And uh, because they show they have financial acumen, number one, they have, um, they have leadership skills and they can multitask. So they, they are good candidates, you know, for companies, you know, for small or large, in terms of being able to provide value to the company. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Now, this is our approach. Our approach to financial literacy. You know, we just don't come in and talk about it, uh, financial literacy, uh, or the theoretical side of it. We look at the practical application of it. Here, you see, we teach the foundation knowledge first. You know, just what is credit. You know, then we show how you use it. Or if it's stock. Yeah, you know, we talk about stocks. What is a stock? How do you use it to create wealth? And all down the line, the practical application of it. And you see, we use very, uh, types of learnings we use. We use the student ambassadors to reinforce it. We have demonstrations. The whole idea is to change the mindset of individuals so they can make better decisions about the use of money and also enhance their values in terms of what they can get out of their money. You know, so we and that we change that change that that, that effort. Okay, thanks. Now you notice here, based on the study here, and so that's why it's so important the work that we do in terms of financial literacy, and also not only the efficiency of the household or the individual or the individuals, but the efficiency of the economy. If we can get more people financial literacy, the economy works more efficient too. Now you notice on the left hand side here when you talk about people who uh, households who are financial literate, they have delayed gratification. Look at the long term view, you know. And we know that um, that's really important in terms of accumulating wealth. They have increased savings and investments. They have limited consumer debt. They have a diversified uh, portfolio of investments, real estate and financial assets so like stocks and bonds. They have better mortgages, auto loans. They accumulate retirement savings. That's why you have a, a higher wealth uh, level among those people. Because the medium net wealth, wealth in America 
you know, when it comes to uh, people of color, it's around $16,000 versus $171,000 for, say, a white household. So you get a big difference. So we are, and then on the left-hand side, those with financial literacy, you see that you have current gratification, present bias. I got to buy it now, you know, I have lim- even though I have limited savings, limited bes- investment, no investments, casual spending, high debt load, low retirement savings, poor loans, and limited wealth. So we want to move those who are on the right-hand side over to the left-hand side. That's our effort. So we can have um, uh, people with more wealth, you know, making better decisions, have savings accounts. Uh, when they re- get in those golden years, they have a financial base to, uh, to live on, you know, and not be subject to Social Security or the whims of politicians. You know, you want to have that available to you. That next. So that's where that's what we are. That's what we that's what we spend our time doing. You know, we're based here in Alexandria, Virginia, but we, as I say, we move around the country to um, to to have an impact and help people. And we, now we've reached over five hundred thousand people in doing that directly, indirectly. Since we asked the parent, the students to share with their parents, relatives, and friends, we said we have reached out a million people, more than a million people, and doing the work that we're doing. So we're excited about what we have accomplished, and we're excited about the support that we get from of organizations like the KIA uh, Family Foundation. We have other uh, uh, supporters like Carver Federal Savings Bank. Uh, Carver supports us too at three of the schools. So we have, we're, we're excited about that. Now, I want to have uh, um, uh, Mrs. Um, uh, Riley Irvin to talk about uh, the work that the Family Foundation is doing, the KEI Foundation is doing uh, in this area to help people in general.